Hey folks, I'm Dumotro, and today I want to tell you about which digits square numbers can never end in. Square numbers like 25 represented here with a 5x5 five five square of dice could be seen as the numbers that I could make squares out of dice like this or could be clarified as the numbers that are some whole number times itself. And when we write them down in a base, like our base 10 system, or other bases we'll also look at in this video, there are patterns, such as the last digit having certain things it can never be if a number is square. Now, to see why and how this is the case, let's note that if I ever square a number that's more than one digit, that means I've multiplied it by itself, and all of the digits in places further than the ones place will be multiplying quantities of tens or hundreds or more by other quantities of tens or hundreds or more, and causing too big of a size to affect the ones place. Only what's in the ones place times itself will affect the new last digit of the result. And so if we look at any number that ends in a one in our base, for example, multiplying that by itself will cause the last digit to just be one times one or another one. Any number that ends in a two in our base we'll have a result whose last digit is two times two or four. Any number ending in a three R base, its square will end in a nine. And now when we get to numbers ending in a four, four times four at the end is 16, but that 10 part of the 16, the one in front of it, will just carry onward and affect these larger digits, and only that six at the end of the 16 will remain as the last digit of the result. And similarly, any number ending in five will have the last digit of its result be the last digit of five squared, which is another five. And numbers ending in six would have the last digit ending in six squared's last digit, which is six again. We've already gotten a six, and now we get another six. And since there's only going to be 10 options, if we include zero, which we should, numbers ending in zero have their square ending in zero, there's only 10 options and there's 10 possibilities for the result. So the fact that we've doubled one means there's gonna be one missing. So each time one of our new results is a copy of something before, that's gonna signify it's taken up a spot that some other number as a possible last digit can't take up. There's only going to be 10 arrows total. And as we go forward to seven, we can see that seven times seven is 49, ending in a nine. And that again is a repeat, taking up another spot from the other missing digits. And eight times eight is 64. So numbers ending in eight have their square ending in four, another repeat, nine is 81, those would end in one, another repeat. And so everything that hasn't been listed on this side so far can't be the end of any square number because a square number must be a number ending in one of these times itself. And what's missing here? We're missing two, three, seven, and eight. All of those digits a square number cannot end in in our base 10 system. 
Now, more technically, what's going on here is these are the values uh, that a whole number can be congruent to in what's called mod 10, sort of like a clock with 10 things on it spinning around, like we're going up numbers, but only looking at the last digit. And in mod 10, these numbers are known as the quadratic non-residues. In an episode on my main combo class channel a little while ago called Modular Multiplication Magic, which I'll link in the description, we looked at the quadratic residues in some different mods, and now the question I posed is kind of the flip of that and does have a name too, that we can call them the quadratic non-residues. And these are just the non-residues for mod 10. There are different non-residues for other mods. And in fact, here is a list of the quadratic non-residues in mods 2 through 12. Now, if we switch this to these bases, these are the num the digits, essentially, apart from the 11 and 10 near the bottom. If we see 11 or 10, those would be a single digit in those bases. Then these are the digits that square numbers cannot end in in these given bases. It also tells us these are amounts, square numbers cannot be higher than multiples of the number in the circle. So like there are no square numbers that are two, three, seven, or eight more than a multiple of 10. And that's actually the same as the fact that no square numbers end in those digits in our way of writing numbers. So, Gotta love looking at some deep patterns inside numbers to see how our base compares with others. In this circumstance, I would say that it's kind of good to have more non-residues in terms of it's neater where your square numbers do end. If you have less possibilities, then sort of like a neater pattern of sorts. And so, although I often advocate for base six, and I still will, most of base six's patterns are superior as far as one of these being used to count by humans. The second best base for humans, in my opinion, base 12, would be, in my opinion, the winner of this category out of this range. It has a lot of quadratic non-residues. Square numbers would only end in four possible ending digits in that base, and they're the ending digits that are low squares, zero, one, four, and nine. Anything else, the square number can't end in in that base. So that's sort of neat. And it can be translated, whether we're in the base or not, to that square numbers are never any of these amounts more than a multiple of 12. Which sounds almost too limiting for the square numbers, but it's true. So I hope you enjoyed learning this little bonus quadratic non-residue stuff with me. Uh, make sure to stay tuned to the main Combo Class channel where I'll have an awesome episode also related to different bases coming out this Sunday. And I'll see you in some shape or form or another on this channel again soon too.